about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today I'm going to show you how to make an RV parking pad in four easy steps. First step you're going to do is you're going to define your area. Ours is going to be 12 foot wide, 40 foot long. You're going to want to define the area that you're going to park your RV on. I got my helper with me today. Okay, we're going to start with this corner here. What you want to make sure that you look out for is anything overhead in case you in the future you want to build like a pole barn or some a shelter over your RV. So we're going to define the area so that missing the trees, we got a source for electrical, we got a source for water. And so this is, I think this right here is going to be our first spot that we use. So just pick a spot somewhere down in there. Okay, doggy. So that will be our first spot. And now walk that way. We've got 12 feet this way. You also got to think about the orientation of where the pad's going to go. All right, now spray, put it on the ground and spray the spot there. Now we need to do 40 feet this way. So 12 by 40 is what we're going to do. We may end up doing like 15 or 16 feet because the camper is probably eight foot wide. So we'll determine that after the fact. Here's a really cool trick that you got to know to keep the area square, okay? So go back on that corner and put the, put the tape on the corner on your spot. Now you can measure. You got 42 feet that way. So go that way. Uh, keep going out a little bit. Just make it a little divot or a, a mark, but don't paint yet. Now we need to measure 12 foot that way. That way we keep it square. Now we'll measure 40 feet this way. So it doesn't have to be exact. When we define the space with the, the landscape timbers, we'll go ahead and make it, make it square that way. But this is a rough, kind of a rough end, I guess you'd say. Now that I got the space kind of defined, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the backhoe off, the Branson, get all brood is swapped out with the three-point hitch configuration and put a box blade on them because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level the area that I've defined and we'll do that with Brutus. On hot summer days like this you need to get you know find a good shady spot to, to do your work in so that you don't just die of heat exhaustion while you're trying to swap out your implements and stuff. We are going to swap out the Titan attachment forks for the standard bucket that comes onto the with the Branson 5220 but so anyway but we're going to do it right here in the shade. One thing about taking the backhoe off is now I've got to reconfigure the three-point hitch. On the Branson, what you have to do is actually remove the arms. There's a little bolt down there that you need to take off and reconfigure. So that's what we're in the process of doing now. Now that we've got the three-point hitch arms off, now we just got to put them back on. Put the lift arm part of it back on and we'll be good to go back in business. So you put this pin in and you put this pin in. Uh, take your cotter pin. Again, your lock washer and your bolt. And do the same thing on the other side. We'll tighten that down. And do the same thing on this side. All right, now that I've got the backhoe off and I've got the box blade on, we're gonna go and we're gonna start with step two. Step two is to level the area that you just defined. How we're gonna level our area is we're gonna take the, the box blade that we have and we're just gonna use it with the tractor. And we're just gonna start with our corners that we painted earlier here and here. And we're just going to start, and we'll probably make it 15 feet just to give us an area to play with here. You know, we marked it out 12 by 40, but we'll make it, we'll probably make it 15 feet or so-ish. It's not going to be exact. And then we'll come back and go to the points that we have painted on the other side there. So that's what we'll do. we we'll use a box blade in the bucket. And then when we're done, what I've got is I've got these 4x4 four four timbers. They're 12 foot long, pressure treated. But what I'm going to do is... I'm going to actually put them on the ground and then I'll put a level, I'll put a four foot long level on them. I don't have like laser equipment or anything like that, but I'll put a level on them across here to see if we got it level from front to back. And then that would be a good foundation for 
our next step, which is step three. But let's go ahead and get this part leveled out now. And don't forget, you guys, if you like these kind of videos, uh, we do a lot of projects around our little hobby farm here, little flower farm that we got going on. Hit that subscribe button. We sure would appreciate it. Read the description below. We've got some links down below about some stuff that we use on the farm, some Amazon links. Anyway, some, some stuff like that. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, hit those links. I actually want to get this thing a little more aggressive cut so I'm gonna fix my top link adjust my top link and that will help me adjust the cut and get a little more aggressive okay now we've got this cleaned up now let's check the level and see how close we got it all right so I'm just gonna take a 12 foot long 4x4 four four, put it across the where we leveled a couple places just to check it and again it ain't got to be exact matter of fact you probably want it at a little slant so water drains right but we'll check it and see how level we got it. And get the level, see what we got going on here. A couple, there's a low spot right there. Let's see. That ain't too bad, huh? Not too bad at all, if I do say so myself. Pretty good. We got a, a little low spot right here to clean up. Grades don't show up too good on the on video but you get the point I'm trying to make and then I've got a little low spot here to, to clean up but other than that I think it's going to be halfway decent now that we've got it leveled that'll take us to step three and step three is prepare the area for gravel let me show you what that step looks like in order to prepare the area for gravel what I've got is I've got some cardboard here you can see this cardboard where well, we ordered like some mattresses or something and I've got a bunch of cardboard there and you think why are you using cardboard cardboard is an excellent weed barrier it will also prevent the gravel that we're going to spread through here from settling into the dirt and kind of help uh, stabilize it I guess as a as a foundation to keep the gravel from sinking into the dirt and so we're going to take the four by fours that we've got on the trailer the pressure treated four by fours we're going to outline the area here get it all nice and level get the cardboard and whatever the cardboard doesn't do uh doesn't cover i've got landscape cloth but it's important to lay down some type of barrier one for weed protection and two to help prevent the rocks from going into the dirt so let's go ahead and get started on that I left my DeWalt wrench on the ground last night.
Well, it makes it easier. And when he puts that tailgate out like that, he can control the spread. I think he did a good job. Y'all notice something, by the way? Yeah, remember all that cardboard I was gonna put down? <laughs> Dang gum it. I got so excited about this guy getting here and getting the, the graph, and I said, hey, I can just have him spread it for me, you know, save me some work. I forgot to lay it. So what I'm gonna have to do, create more work for myself, I'm gonna take my bucket and I'm just gonna sc scoot the rock over. I'm gonna push all the rock over to the right side, lay the cardboard out, push the rock back over on top of it. Man, you talk about a mistake that's going to cost me time for, for labor anyway. But we'll get it done. I mean, all is not lost. It's Maybe that's easier that way. I don't know. But it stinks. That uh, uh, It just stinks. Okay, new plan. What we're going to do, the more and more I check this level, the more and more it slopes down this way. So I'm going to forego putting 4x4s four four on that side, and I'm going to build it too high here and too high here. Basically, I'll make like a retaining wall is basically what I'm doing. So we'll put rebarb down in between. Let's see. Yeah, that's square. We'll put rebar down to keep it in place. And then I'll put some lag screws in the, the four by fours to keep them together. I'll add cardboard on what I can here because the awning and the patio chairs and all this stuff, you know, the door and all this is going to be on this side. We'll go ahead and We'll make this, we'll thin the rock out and make it deeper on this side, thinner on this side, but it still should work. We'll see. Did I mention this is the first time I've ever built a parking pad for an RV? So I'm learning as I go, but it's been a fun experiment. I think it's gonna turn out nice so far. It's looking okay, not too bad. All right, what we've done is in this corner, we've got it leveled and squared in this corner. Now she's running a string to the other corner. We And we also measured diagonally across so we got 42 feet that way 41 feet 10 inches this way so we figured that's close enough for a parking pad so now uh, what i'll do is we'll we're going to run the level on the landscape timbers this way for the retaining wall portion if you will and then we'll make everything level and square to this particular wall over here and that takes me to step four spread and level your gravel what we're going to do is actually spread, I'll start in that corner down there, start to bring it back. I'll push it in that corner, start to bring it back. And then on this side, I'm actually going to take some dirt here and build up to it. Maybe like a little berm or a little, uh, you know, just to give it some more stability. But we put the rebar down through there to kind of help stabilize it. And then as we get to this end, we'll float the gravel out and kind of spread it, make it look like an apron. And that will help when the when my buddy brings his RV up here and backs into here, it'll be nice and even.
All right, so we got it done. We used about, I want to say it's four cubic yards. So it's, uh, it's about 13 feet wide, 40, 42 feet long, something like that. And on this end, it's probably, uh, well, the four by fours are, what, seven and a half inches, seven inches, seven and a half inches deep. And then we taper it off to ground level here. And so if you do the math on that, I think it comes out to be about four cubic yards, something like that. I can't remember. You, you, you can go online and get a gravel calculator, and that will, you know, just the length, width, depth, and that'll tell you how much you're going to need tonnage and uh, cubic yards. I got a tick high right there, uh, but it looks looks pretty smooth. So anyway, that's the four easy steps. You got to define your area. You've got to level the area, prep the area for gravel, and then spread the gravel. Really simple project. You can get it done in a in a weekend. You probably even get it done in a day if if the weather permits. You know, start out early in the morning, have all your supplies ready. And I think you'll be good to go and doing this in just one day, especially as simple as this parking pad was. And if you're doing on level ground and you don't have a lot of tractor work to do, it's going to be even easier for you. Hey, thanks for watching. Over here is the little white circle. Click that to subscribe. Underneath it is a video that we have on our channel. We'd love for you to go watch some more videos from Hamiltonville Farm. You guys take care. God bless.